Hello everyone. For this video, we're going to be talking about the main enzymes involved in glycolysis. Now there are actually a number of enzymes involved, but for this video, we're just going to be talking about the high yield enzymes that are going to be showing up on your board exams. Now the first enzyme that we're going to be talking about is actually hexokinase and glucokinase. So what is the difference between these two enzymes? Well, with these enzymes, what, what we find is that they're actually located in different parts of the body, and based on their locations, we can sort of figure out the characteristics surrounding each of the enzymes because they do vary quite significantly. So hexokinase is found in most of the tissues, whereas glucokinase is found in the liver and in the beta cells of the pancreas. Knowing this, it makes sense that hexokinase is not going to be affected by insulin, whereas glucokinase is influenced by insulin. The next thing we should know is that hexokinase is actually inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. Now glucose 6-phosphate is going to be the product of the enzyme itself. So, this, so from this point, we can realize that because it's, it's inhibited by its own product, we can sort of know that within the tissues, within the body, that they, there's no reason to be taking up glucose if there is already glucose 6-phosphate inside the cell because there's no need for excess glucose consumption with most of the cells within the body. However, we see that in glucokinase, it is actually inhibited by fructose 6-phosphate, which is one step downstream from glucose 6-phosphate. And this is because we actually do want to uptake more glucose within these cells. That's why it's not going to be directly inhibited by its product. Now the inhibition that occurs due to fructose 6-phosphate is actually quite interesting. Because what you have is that glucokinase is inhibited by fructose 6-phosphate and also glucokinase uh, regulatory protein. So what's going to occur is that this protein is going to bind to glucokinase and then along with fructose 6-phosphate, this is going to cause glucokinase to translocate into the nucleus of the cell and actually inhibit its uh, activity. And this, what's also interesting is that this inhibition is overcome by glucose because glucose will actually displace glucokinase arresting protein. Therefore, you're not going to be having that translocation into the nucleus. So that's pretty cool. And it's also, and that this is, and this makes sense because you're going to have an increased activity with high blood sugar because there's going to be high levels of glucose inside the body, then this is going to increase as well. Now the next thing we have is that you're going to have hexokinase is going to increase with low blood, blood sugar. And this, this, this makes sense because if you think about it, glucose 6-phosphate inhibits this product. So therefore, when you're going to have high amounts of sugar, you're going to have high amount of this product, which is going to cause an inhibition, whereas low levels of this product seen with low levels of blood sugar is going to increase activity of the hexokinase. Okay, so the next point I'm going to be talking about is Vmax and KM. Now, if we know that KM is the concentration of substrate at which half of the enzymes become used, it makes sense to think that if there's a low substrate required for half the enzymes to be occupied, then that means there's going to be an increased affinity. And then the vice versa is going to occur as well. Now, knowing what KM is, knowing that hexokinase is a low KM and glucokinase is a high KM, we can figure out, based on this equation, what the Vmax will be, and actually understand the logic as how we can figure out these answers if they show up on, on an exam. Now, if we have a very low KM, it's going to take a small amount of substrate concentration to make the KM seem insignificant. Okay. Therefore, if when the KM cancels out because the substrate is slightly larger, therefore we can see that okay, then these two substrates will can cancel out as well. So then you're going to be left with V equals V max. So right now we can see that V will equal the V max at quite a small amount of substrate because the KM is so small as well. Therefore, when, when you look at how the enzyme shows in respect to uh, enzyme kinetics, you can see that this is hexokinase right here, that its Vmax, although it's very low, occurs at a very 
uh, small substrate concentration. Now, if we use the same logic when we approach the enzyme glucokinase, which has a high KM or a low affinity, we can also understand that since there's a high KM, we're going to need a much larger amount of substrate in order for this KM to seem insignificant. So therefore, once this high amount of substrate is present, we can cancel those out, and then V equals V max. So therefore, the KM is going to be larger, and the substrate concentration is also going to be larger in order to reach the V max. That's why we can see in terms of the enzyme kinetics chart that here at glucokinase, the substrate requirement is much higher, but as well the Vmax is also much higher. So that is important to know. And the last thing we can talk about to tie in is glucokinase deficiency. Now with glucokinase deficiency, it makes sense that those individuals are unable to take up glucose within their cells, more specifically the liver and beta cells of the pancreas. So as we can expect, these patients are going to be hyperglycemic. However, it's also even worse because since we're talking about the pancreas, we're going to have an inability to secrete insulin. So that's going to make things even worse. And lastly, it should be noted that glucokinase deficiency is often uh, uh, comes out in terms of during uh, pregnancy.